Welcome to Fantastic Vision. Please subscribe us before you watch today's video. As a basic resource of modern industry, chips are widely used in many fields such as computers, communications, automobiles, aircraft, and consumer electronics. They are one of the key industries developed by countries around the world. If the core chip technology is not mastered, the relevant industries will have to rely on imports, thus facing the risk of technological constraints. In the science and technology community, there is a view that international competition is essentially a technological competition, and the core of technological competition lies in the control of chip technology. Countries that master the most advanced chip technology will have greater voice in the field of science and technology. For example, the United States, as the birthplace of semiconductors, has a large number of core chip technology patents in its hands and has already penetrated into various fields of the global semiconductor industry chain in recent years. Whether it is chip foundry giant Samsung and TSMC, or Dutch lithography machine giant ASML, they have more or less used American technology patents and components. Therefore, for so many years, they dare not offend the United States directly, and can only listen and follow. In an environment without any threats, American chip companies such as Qualcomm, Intel and Micron are also rising rapidly, occupying a large share of the global chip market. Huawei has risen strongly again from falling to achieving a breakthrough. Although the emergence of Huawei's Kirin chip completely broke the monopoly of Qualcomm, an American company, in mobile phone chips, Huawei's 5G has surpassed Qualcomm, Ericsson, Nokia and other old communication giants, shaking the United States' dominant position in the communication industry. But Huawei encountered comprehensive sanctions from the United States not long after its rise. After experiencing the entity list, chip rules and tripartite agreements, Huawei was also in an embarrassing situation of no chips available. A company that launched 5G and 5G chips for the first time in the world can only sell 4G mobile phones, which is simply helpless. But what the United States never expected was that even in the face of many means of suppression, Huawei did not fear at all, but became more and more courageous. Thanks to its unremitting efforts and the spirit of living for death, Huawei has achieved a breakthrough in just three years, returned with the Kirin chip, and returned to the throne of the first domestic smartphone in the first quarter of this year, once again suffocating Apple. Not only that, just recently Huawei Mate 70 and Apple's iPhone 16 also started a confrontation at the press conference, and it seems that Huawei still has the upper hand in popularity. SMIC's strong efforts have completely broken the defense of Global Foundries and UMC. In addition to Huawei's strong return, China has also made frequent breakthroughs in the field of chip manufacturing. Take SMIC, the strongest chip manufacturer in the mainland, for example. Since Huawei was sanctioned in order to achieve the goal of 70% chip localization, as soon as possible, SMIC has begun to exert strong efforts, not only spending huge sums of money to build factories and expand production, but also increasing investment in process technology. You should know that SMIC was only ranked fifth in the global chip manufacturing field before, after Global Foundries and UMC, but with strong efforts, 
SMIC has officially started the road to catch up. According to the first and second quarter financial reports officially announced by SMIC, its total revenue in the first half of this year was 26.269 billion yuan, a year-on-year -year increase of 23.2%, of which the revenue of wafer foundry business was 24.108 billion yuan, a year-on-year -year increase of 25.7%, directly surpassing UMC and Global Foundries to become the world's second-largest pure wafer foundry after TSMC. Not only that, SMIC's business structure has also changed greatly this year. The proportion of its main business from the domestic market is about 81%, which can be said to have successfully gotten rid of its dependence on the US market. It is worth mentioning that SMIC's 8-inch wafer shipments in the first quarter of this year were 1.794 million pieces and 2.111 million pieces in the second quarter, which means that SMIC's 8-inch wafer shipments in the first half of the year were about 3.905 million pieces. If an 8-inch wafer can be cut into 200 chips, it is equivalent to SMIC's total shipments of about 780 million chips in the first half of this year. This capacity growth rate can be said to be very fast. On the other hand, the US company Global Foundries had a revenue of 3.18 billion US dollars in the first half of this year, equivalent to about 23.3 billion renminbi, a year-on-year -year decline of more than 10%, and the average capacity utilization rate also fell below 76%. If this situation continues, then SMIC's competitors will no longer be Global Foundries and UMC, but TSMC and Samsung. As the saying goes, without scars, there is no thick skin. If there were no series of sanctions from the United States, China's rise in the chip industry would not be so fast. Now Huawei has returned strongly with Kirin chips, and the mobile phone market is gradually recovering. SMIC's wafer production capacity and revenue are also beginning to rise gradually. I believe that it will not be long before China can completely break the blockade and achieve the goal of 70% localization and completely get rid of the fate of being choked. Please like if you agree.